人類は本当の最強を知る Citizens of the world I'm here to change your life Anything you want Anything you dream of you can have it 禁断の力を手にした男マックス彼の陰謀で全世界が崩壊する I wanna be my apex predator Get used to it 立ち向かうのはスミソニアン博物館で働く考古学者 Nothing good is born from lies and greatness is not what you think I can save today but you can save the world For rules, the answer is always more. What did you do? Sky high scale of scale, the Hanats. Titan Gata Battle Action. You know, I'm not so keen on this one. I figure、uh, you are, but you know what? I'm ready to go. I think we can do better. Parachute pants? Yeah.、Um... Does, it, does everybody parachute now? Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. So, they dropped a new Wonder Woman 1984 trailer with a bunch of new footage. We'll break it down. Also, talk about what's going on with Wonder Woman in the Justice League Snyder cut in the future of the DCEU now that we know that the Flash movie, or at least the Flash producers, have talked about rebooting the DCEU a little bit with the Flashpoint twist. So, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We'll do a new Amazon giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and let me know what you want them to do with Wonder Woman going forward in new DC movies. If you've been watching all the other big Justice League actors and the newer DC movie actors like the Shazam people or The Rock and the Black Adam movie talk about Wonder Woman, everybody wants her to cross over into their movies that are coming up. But the new trailer opens with a bunch of different scenes focusing mostly on the big final battle between Wonder Woman and Cheetah on that island or the remote location where the special transmission station is for Maxwell Lord to broadcast his magical wishing stone effect around the world simultaneously. That's called the Dream Stone, that black rock that they use to make all those wishes. That's what he's talking about when he's speaking in the trailer inside the White House. People of the world, I'm here to change your life. The White House scene, though, is from earlier in the movie. You can chart the timeline of the movie in the trailer footage just based on what Cheetah looks like, how she starts out as that awkward, comedic Barbara Minerva version of the character who's just a normal archaeologist alongside Wonder Woman at the Smithsonian. Then Maxwell Lord discovers and gets his hands on the Dream Stone, which was made by a god, but it's a bit of a monkey's paw situation where, yes, you're getting wishes granted, but something really bad usually winds up happening to you as a result of that wish. So they use it to start making their wishes, and she starts getting more and more powerful, seemingly getting Wonder Woman's powers, or at least getting powerful like her, because her big desire, at least in the first part of the movie, is to be just like Wonder Woman. Because you could tell from that conversation in the earlier trailer when they're talking about Steve Trevor and being in love, she idolizes her like a goddess. Technically, Wonder Woman is a demigod, though. But Wonder Woman and kind of the message of the movie is like, uh, no, not exactly. It doesn't work like that. My life isn't as perfect as you think, referencing all the people she's lost along the way, mostly in service of setting up that big Steve Trevor twist. But of course, because Cheetah is going full blown comic book Cheetah in the movie, she totally misses the point. All she can think about is just leveling up her life. Wonder Woman 1984 is mostly meant to be a movie about what greed does to people, metaphorically and literally, because it is a comic book movie, so the metaphors become literal by the end of the movie. You become a metaphorical monster, but then you literally turn into a monster, like when she goes full blown comic book cheetah. But there's a different scene of her lassoing the lightning bolts, which looks totally badass. I can't wait to see how they explain that in the movie. Then she's dodging all the cannon fire. And then there's a totally new scene of her using the golden armor to literally fly and take out the guards that are protecting Maxwell Lord's big fortified broadcast station. You get a really good look at how the golden armor wings actually articulate like bird wings or angel wings, depending on how you want to look at it. Wonder Woman is a character built on Greek mythology, so you could also make Icarus and Daedalus references. But it's magically enchanted armor, just like her gauntlets or the Lasso of Truth. The armor is ancient in the context of the movie. It's like an heirloom built by one of her ancestors, forged from the pieces of a bunch of different armor sets belonging to other notable Amazon warriors from their history on Themyscira. But it was originally designed to be a war suit worn by regular Amazons. Wonder Woman doesn't need to wear armor because she's almost as powerful as Superman. Almost, 
almost nothing can pierce her skin. The whole reason why she has to wear it in the movie is because by this point, late in the game, so much of her natural power has been drained by the Dreamstone that she's just as squishy as a regular human, and Cheetah has already leveled up again for the second time into her final boss form. Full blown comic book Cheetah as we finally saw. And even when Wonder Woman is at full strength, Cheetah's claws are powerful enough to pierce her skin, so with her being depowered, Cheetah would rip through her like tissue paper if she weren't wearing special armor. You can make a lot of Batman v Superman references with Batman's giant suit, the tank suit that he wore when he was trying to fight Superman. Zack Snyder made some jokes and references when he was explaining it when the movie originally came out. He said that it's not so much about protecting him from Superman or preventing Superman from killing him. It's really just him wearing that suit of armor to buy him a couple extra seconds. Because Superman is so powerful, it's like crushing a soda can. So that's why it was so critical when they were fighting each other that he was using the kryptonite. Otherwise, Superman would have just squished him like a bug, no matter what kind of armor he was wearing. But even late in the game here during Wonder Woman 1984, when she's wearing the armor and she's lost most of her powers, it seems like she still has the lasso of truth, and it seems like that hasn't lost any of its potency to the Dreamstone. I love all this old school 80s technology through all these montages when Maxwell Lord is speechifying, doing his big villain monologue, trying to get the world to drink his Kool-Aid. The whole mall fight scene later in the trailer actually happens a bit earlier in the movie. It's going down when everybody starts riding in the streets after this first big TV broadcast where you see everyone in the street watching him and they start making wishes, causing all kinds of havoc. The reason why everyone starts going full-blown crazy town is just a side effect of the Dreamstone granting everyone's wishes simultaneously and what it takes from them in return. Like the law of equal exchange, you can't create something out of nothing. You have to take from one thing to give to another, so one person makes a wish, it inadvertently starts affecting the people around them in negative ways. And this is also true of the Steve Trevor twist too. So her big wish is for Steve Trevor to come back, and that inadvertently brings him back to life, but it just doesn't magic him up out of nothing. They actually have to take from someone else's body to bring Steve Trevor back. I believe the movie is supposed to explain that twist pretty well. It'll be pretty easy to follow. The cheetah leopard print 80s fashion is totally out of control. I can't wait to see Kristen Wiig go full comic book in the movie. Most of the footage of her at various points in her transformation process do a pretty good job of showing her range as she slowly descends from normal person to comic book villain. You can really see the twist here when she takes down the mugger. This is really early on when she just starts to notice her new abilities like, hey, wait a minute, I'm super fast and super strong. Then there's a scene of what looks like her using the lasso of truth to full-blown fly through the air, but it's not clear when this is happening during the movie. Wonder Woman of the DCEU can actually fly. She even does it at the end of the first Wonder Woman movie. That's what's happening when she's launching off of the roof of the Louvre in Paris. I think the reason why we haven't seen her fly in any huge fight scenes or big battle scenes up to this point, like not flying during the theatrical cut of Justice League, is just because they were saving that for the Wonder Woman sequels and they wanted it to feel like some big character development moment. Like Superman flying for the first time in Man of Steel is meant to be a really special character development moment for him as he's leveling up. But if you guys were watching all the DC fandom panels and the Justice League Snyder Cut footage, obviously there's a whole bunch of new Wonder Woman scenes during the Justice League Snyder Cut that'll sort of explain what's going on with her character in the future of the DCEU. I've gotten so many questions about whether or not the Snyder Cut is going to replace the theatrical cut as the new canon of the DCEU. I think if you want to, you can take it that way. The studio probably won't fight anybody on that. Like if you want to think of this as the new canon, then sure, go for it. When it comes down to continuity and character beats, for the most part, the DC filmmakers, the different directors, kind of are doing their own things with the characters in each of their movies. There's just a loose continuity that sort of ties everything together. When they get to Wonder Woman 3, when that movie eventually comes out, Patty Jenkins will again just kind of do what she wants to with the character, loosely acknowledging some of the stuff that's happened before. But obviously the other big news is that Wonder Woman 1984 is now coming out in December right on Christmas. So they just decided to delay the movie because theaters aren't totally open in the United States yet. But the good news is it's still coming out in 2020, at least for now. If there are any big changes to the release schedule or anything like that, of course I'll include that in the videos that I make for the movie. So while you wait for everything, click here for that brand new Justice League Snyder Cut trailer and click here for the brand new Batman trailer. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. I'll see you guys tonight.